State Senator John Flanagan is the longtime chairman of the Education Committee in the State Senate. It's great to see you. Thank you. My pleasure. So what do you think about this escalating war of words between the governor and the teachers' unions? Uh, I think it's problematic on a number of different levels. If we focus on what is the ultimate goal, it's about student outcomes. What kids are doing well, where are they doing well, how can we replicate that? But, you know, the vitriol, the hyperbole, um, the attacks back and forth, I don't think they really help anybody whether it's the governor or the teachers, and it's problematic on a lot of different levels. To me, the level, the tone, and the content of the dialogue is extremely important, starting with how do we get the best teacher in front of the classroom? So how do you keep parents involved? How do you get schools to do the right thing? So uh, what I, would, uh, I have no problem talking about things that are not going particularly well, but where things need to be fixed, fine. But let's start off talking about where things are going really well, whether it's in We're, Chautauqua, Plattsburgh, Syracuse, Long Island, Westchester. I think that's really important. So you can't paint the whole system with a broad brush. No, you our can't. schools are we failing. Can't. No, I think if you look in the communities that I represent in particular, the graduation rates are well north of 90%. Uh, if you look across the state, you take Syracuse, Rochester, you take black and Hispanic males, they are doing um, very poorly. So how do we fix that? So when you, and when you uh, in a macro sense, you say, all right, 75% of the kids are graduating, that masks some of the underlying problems. So we should laud where things are going well and look at things that are not going well and say, how do we fix it? So you're from Long Island, uh, where some of the best schools in the country are. Uh, last week, the administration asked State Ed to investigate the results of teacher evaluations. I'm sure mm -hmm. you saw the report in Newsday that said, um, uh, you know, the, the teacher evaluations on Long Island are being skewed. What do you think about this? Well, I think a couple of different things. First of all, everything that was ultimately advanced was approved by the State Education Department. So you can have a debate about what what should be done there. Was it done well? Was it done properly? And I, I think that's a fair debate. What are you doing about student outcomes? It's about the teacher, but ultimately it's about what are we doing for the student? We know there was a Siena poll that just came out recently that, uh, and the people polled said that it's parental involvement. Then there are other studies that say it's poverty that's the greatest influence on student outcomes. But the governor seems to be focused on the teachers, which is certainly a part of it. But is he focusing on the right stuff? I have been fortunate to have grown up in a family with um, both parents involved and raised my own children with both parents involved. So parental involvement, critical on so many different levels. But that sh should not be a benchmark to say that some family is in a poor position because they're a single parent or anything like that. Poverty it is a massive indicator of a child's potential for success. But, you know, how do we... How do we bring things forward? How do we look at it so we are advancing children in the best way? Um, those things are all important, but it's not any one thing in particular. I think it's a whole cross-section of components. So you were there when the governor said during his budget address, State of the State, you know, why, he questioned why is it that uh, we have lousy student outcomes, I'm paraphrasing, yet 99% of the teachers are getting good evaluations. Um, his answer was to increase the weight of the student test scores on those evaluations. Do you think that's the answer? First of all, the governor negotiated that law. The law that he is lamenting now is the one that he negotiated. So we need to keep that in mind. Um, what do we do with teachers? And I think it's a whole spectrum. You can't just focus on ultimately what I said about student outcomes. How are we bring people into the profession? Do they stay? And if they stay, do they do well? So if you... If I said to you, you and I sat down and said, all right, we're going to come up with a test, and we're going to get the best input from the people in the field, the best. So to measure teacher To measure teachers, okay. right. So if you say, all right, 50% is going to be the benchmark, that may not be such a bad thing.
The governor also proposed a, a, a bunch of other reforms, from raising the cap on charter schools to uh, lengthening the time that it would take teachers to be uh, tenured to, from three to five years. He also recommended a turnaround program for failing districts. Any comment on any of the reforms that the governor proposed? Yeah, I think, um, I think the governor has the prerogative, the right, and the absolute privilege of advancing all these things. But I think he and his administration need to figure out what's the end game. What do you really want? Do you want quality teacher stuff? Do you want whatever it may be? Do you want reform and tenure? And I'm not sure that they know what that is or what they really want. It sounds so, like they want all of the above. That's fine, um, but that's not how life works. That's not how the legislature works. So you're that's, saying they're not going to get everything. No, I don't think they will, and I, nor do I think they should. If you, There are so many, in my experience, this year, there are more things thrown out on the table than ever before, without question. So where do you end up? So if you say, again, everyone keeps talking about teachers, governor, governor, teachers. It's about students. What are we doing for the kid in third grade? What are we doing for the kid in ninth grade? How are we getting them ready to be college and career ready? So there is, uh, there is nothing, nothing more important than a quality teacher in front of the classroom. But you can't. In my estimation, you can't throw 20 things out there and say, I want everything. It just life doesn't work that way. Do you agree with the governor that, that uh, the teachers are the problem? Um, if, no, I don't. Uh, if you if I, I were to look at the education system, I think in my estimation, part of what we do is we don't reward performing schools. We categorize them in the same way that we do everybody. So it's sort of a one-size-fits-all, and I would just respectfully say that we focus way too much on the inputs on the front end of the process as opposed to the outcomes. So very quickly, if you have, say, 20% of the schools have a graduation rate of 95% or better, okay, why are they under the same guidelines? And part of the problem with that is when you advance that, if it's you, it's one thing. If I say that to you, oh, you're a racist, you're discriminatory, you're you know bigoted because you don't care about poverty and kids who don't have the same access to resources, quite the contrary. Figure out how to fix the things that are not going well, but laud and embrace the things that are going well. I can... I Why change what's not broken? Thank you very much. I think that's um, spot on. So, Are there any of the governor's reforms that are non-starters in your mind? Um, I, I guess I would say that tying everything that you either do all my reforms or that's a strategy. There's no money. I don't think that's going to work. I have great respect for the governor and the power of the governor's office, but do I think that's a prudent approach? No. We look at that and say 1.1 billion. That's a floor. Should we have reforms? Absolutely. But should that be a litmus test? I don't think a lot of my colleagues feel that way. Now, I will also say that there is nothing wrong with getting some of these things done in the budget. There's nothing wrong with putting all of those things within the context of the budget because if it's good enough to do in March, or excuse me, good enough to do in June, then why can't we do it in March? So $1.1 billion, which was the governor's upper limit, if everything was passed, all of his reforms were in the budget, he said that he would go with $1.1 billion. That's a floor. He said 344 million would be the floor. That's just too low in your opinion. Yes, and I would respectfully offer that this is my 29th year in the legislature, and I don't really care who the governor is. We always add, we don't subtract. And if it's Andrew Cuomo, Governor Andrew Cuomo, I don't believe he's going to want to say, I talked to you about 1.1 billion, but I'm going to go down south of $400 million. No governor wants to say that. And reform or not, no governor wants to say that. And my colleagues, all of who campaigned on the GEA, because we haven't really talked about gap elimination adjustment, that is our absolute number one priority. Get rid of it. Yeah. So in order to do that, that $1.1 billion would cover that. But I know there's a lot of other expenses as well. Yeah, so uh, if we got rid of the are, – are you advocating getting rid of the gap elimination adjustment in this year's budget? No question. 
Okay, so so one point one that's one billion right there. Uh, it's just about one point one billion. You'd have about three hundred million dollars in expense based aids, and in order to achieve equity and a fair distribution, you're going to have to spend probably close to two billion. There are groups that want the state to again begin fulfilling what they call quote, the promise of the campaign for fiscal equity lawsuit, going back to the foundation aid formula. Is that something that's in the cards? It doesn't seem like the governor feels bound by that. I would respectfully offer the following. Before you can have any real cogent discussions about foundation aid or formulaic changes, you have to get rid of GEA. It's, I said it before, it's like the albatross, the bane of everyone's existence. So before we can move ahead on those things, that GEA needs to be gotten rid of. But let me be very clear, as I express in a different way. In the last three years, we've added $3 billion in new money. So if you look at state aid to education plus star money, we commit over $25 billion in state funding towards public education. Proper funding in public education, absolute number one priority. So. I don't think the governor nor the legislature should apologize for what we have advanced. Do we have aspirational goals? Sure. Do you see a time when the foundation aid formula may be, uh, you know, uh, put back in there? I do, but I think there's going to be a, a robust debate. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I want to be clear. I'm speaking for myself. At the time that the case was decided, CFA, okay? This is 2007. Well, but if you go back, you go... Supreme oh, Court, Appellate well, Division, Court of back, Appeals, yeah. okay? Court of 90s. Appeals sends it, right? <laughs> so this is a 20-year case. I believe what Governor Spitzer advanced, and I want, again, I want to be clear. I'm speaking for myself. I believe what Governor Spitzer advanced far exceeded what the court required. I want to thank you, State Senator John Flanagan.